In the following video, I plan to show how to make a sleeve and bind this. And then at the end, I'm hoping to talk about different kinds of art quilt bindings that I have done and you know that are suitable for certain types of things. Today I'm working on a binding for a new piece. I hope these do well. If they do, it'll become a series. If I can't sell this one, then uh, it won't. I quilted a little bit on this in the test video that I did with my daughter. It was uh, the first video I did on free motion quilting called something like testing one two three or free motion quilting testing one two three so today what I'm going to do in addition to just uh, working on this piece and getting it ready to sell I'm going to show how I do a sleeve I cut these six inches or sometimes five and a half inches depending on what I have half an inch shorter than the piece and then once I turn in and hem the two ends it gives me a little bit of space between the end of the lath I like to kind of keep things flexible and make what's selling this time of year so, and also prioritize commitments that I've made to different people. All we're going to do now is put narrow hems in both ends of this. And I'll show a close up to show that we're just doing around three eighths or a quarter of an inch. And it's more important that it be straight then even that the two ends match and we'll do that on both ends and I'll show a close-up and then we're going to iron in a fold where there's about half an inch or five-eighths of an inch difference between the two edges here. We're going to stitch the two narrow hems in with an edger foot and then we're going to stitch with our edger foot down here and that's going to make a sleeve that we can then baste like this, sew onto our piece. And when it's actually attached, it will be attached like this, hand sewn down on this edge, bound in on this edge, and then we can stick a piece of lath in there. Actually, it'll go like this. And then that will allow us to hang our wall hanging on two little nails. So this will fit in here. Thusly. So I'm using my edger foot and I'm just going to stitch these two little hems on the ends. Then I'm going to stitch down this one. And I am going to back stitch. I had to move my needle over. There's a larger one of these, but I've gotten kind of pressed for time, and so I think I might finish that big one after, after Christmas. It just all depends. See, if I match these up and then press hard from that direction, I'm able to get this fold it over the way I want and then those are made it up. So I'm just going to press the whole length. I'm trying to get it, keep it in frame so you can see what I'm doing.
keep away from that steam. So what's going to happen? Here's one that's done. This, this part goes down on the work, facing down, and it sews in here and is buried inside like this is. And then this little part is the part you hand stitch down underneath. And so like I've done here. And I always stitch these ends as well because I've seen where uh, a friend had a triptych that I made that, uh, or it was actually two pieces, a diptych. But anyway, um, I went to their home after I'd made this custom order for them and one of the pieces had the laugh put through here. So I now sew these down so that it has to go through here because it kind of makes the front of the piece buckle a little bit if it's in the wrong place. And so we're gonna sew this together and then I'm gonna put it on the piece. So I'm just gonna baste down this edge here with these matched up. I'm using a big long stitch. Now I'm going to pin this on, essentially centered. You don't have to baste that, but it really makes it stay in place better when you do this step. I am now sewing it on with a big long stitch and my walking foot. If what follows looks familiar to you, it's because it's basically all the same steps that we followed in the four pin binding video, except now we're incorporating the sleeve. So I haven't really said this before, but uh, my degree is in communications, in public information, and mass communication, so PR and advertising. And one of my professors used to talk about the way your eye moves when you look at a piece. And your eye, at least at that time, with the study that he was talking about, starts up at the top of a work, moves across, kind of sweeps back over, and then ends down here. And I kind of think about that sometimes when I'm doing things. Like if the eye ends here, if I have a seam on my binding, I don't really want it down here where your eye's gonna end up. And because the eye tends to sweep over and then back and then down, for some reason, I prefer to put my messiest seam on this side, on the left side of my piece in the middle of it. And so that's just how I always do it. So I always kind of do this to get an idea of where things are going to fall. If I do it like this, this is going to fall in here, but it's going to be a nice neat one because it's not the one I have to, it's not the scarf joint that I have to do in place. And so I'm going to go ahead and start over here. This corner, and I'll try to show this or another piece finished with some arrows to show you what I'm talking about. But so here's where I'm starting. And I want this, instead of being, center my needle, Instead of being about a half inch the way I've been doing, I want this to actually be five eighths, and so I'm moving this over. And like I say, five eighths may not seem like the right binding width for a lot of people, but to me, five eighths, a straight five eighths seam just has an appealing look uh, because of that garment sewing. 
that I used to do. So I guess I'm about five or six inches from the edge here and I'm just going to sew this. I think I just need to out myself and tell you that every year going into the Christmas season the sewing room starts out clean and by the time that I do my last show or market uh, it's a giant mess. There's stuff everywhere. There's half finished things everywhere. Luckily that when I need to get ready in the spring for my first things or for show applications I have half done work that I can finish up. So here is what my binding looks like finished and I've hand sewn all the way around and then after that I take this sleeve that's still loose on this on this edge here and through here and I pin it really well like this and then I sew it down this edge down this edge and across up on the other side so that you have a nice box sleeve and as I said there's only one place where you can slide in a piece of lath. You can't, they can't do it wrong. Again this stick is too short and this is a pretty snug fit. They're usually a little looser but it goes right like that. And then with two little nails the piece will hang on the wall, the lath won't show and it's the way I've always done my bindings. Here it is on the wall. It's almost finished. I'll probably do a little bit either with beads or some satin stitching, probably both. I think it's in pretty good shape. You can see I've got a yellow pin by each of my scarf joints. There's one. There's another one. somewhere. And then my third one is, is my worst one. It's right there. So that's what it looks like when it's almost finished and it's pretty well trimmed up. Oh, about the sewing room being messy it's gonna get messier the only way I can it's worse now that I'm filming the only way I can keep filming is if occasionally there's a little bit of mess I'll try not to scare anybody thanks okay so I've put a bunch of quilts here so that we could just kind of look at some different variations um, I hope I have a good representative sample uh, this is a narrow quarter inch uh, binding on a wavy shape that I've sewn by machine and because it's a one-sided piece I've allowed uh, this backside to look you know a little sloppy because we're going around those curves we're machine sewing it and it doesn't actually need to look that great I'm sorry if you can hear my bird in the background. She's kind of noisy and I don't want to take her in another room. Um, this one is top stitched with a tan thread. This one has a black, similar but with a straight edge and it's top stitched with a black thread that matches it and because it's straight it's, uh, it appears quite a bit neater. Um, this is one of my bigger pieces with about a 5 8 inch binding and uh, I've hand sewn this. I find that with the bigger pieces I tend to hand sew them now. I did used to sew them all by machine but now I think I kind of like the time I can watch you know, some guilty pleasure like burn notice or something while I'm doing that. And um, this is same thing. This is actually um, I think the ugliest quilt back that I've ever done. This is where some of these thread pileups would be hidden if I used a noisier fabric, but I had a lot of this and wanted to use it up. Um, 
this is one of the bloom flowers and it looks like this on the back and you know hopefully we'll get there we'll see um, I'm having a lot of fun doing this and I've gotten a lot of positive feedback and I really appreciate it and I want to give a shout out to my cousin Naomi who was my first subscriber um, let's see Okay, so this one is a different variation where it starts on the back and it's raw edge on the front. And so there are all different kinds of things that I've experimented with, all different kinds of things you can do. And you can do them by hand, you can do them by machine, depending on what you're after. Uh, so we're going to start with the one we're doing today, after I get rid of this stuff.